In this video, we're going to discuss Shortcuts Lot 5's Bridge Warp feature. Now, I was prompted to create this video as I was scrolling through my Facebook feed and saw someone, uh, and I apologize, I'm not sure where or who posted this, I just kind of took a screen grab, because someone with a cricket asked how to accomplish this look with this font here, where the bottom is straight and the top is curved to kind of create um, a little more interest in this wooden sign here. So um, fortunately, if you own Shortcuts Lot 5, you have this feature built in and it's very simple to use and I wanted to show you how to do that. So we're going to leave this here just to kind of use it as a reference. Now I don't know what font this is. Um, if you want to try to find a creepy font, you can do that if you want to make this sign, but of course this technique you can use for anything really. So let's take a look at um, how to accomplish this with Shortcuts Lot 5. So Shortcuts Lot 5 uses the fonts that are already pre-installed on your computer. You can download any font from the internet, whether it be a paid font or a free font, and install it and use it. And you can see here that it has a, uh, a very responsive um, you know, font selection system through the My Library feature. So these are all the fonts that I have installed on my computer. You can kind of see a preview of what they are and you can either write with the font or you can actually click on the specific font or if the font has like glyphs, you can actually add the little glyphs as well. Uh, so it displays the entire font family, not just what you have on your computer's um, keyboard. So anyway, let's, um, let's just try to kind of recreate this, this, little, uh, this little sign here. And I'm just going to grab any font at this point. And I'm going to go over to the left-hand side here and click on the Type tool. And I'm just going to click onto the mat. Okay, so I'm just going to type in Tricks. And if you want, you can click on the little arrow selection tool here. And you can resize this. You can make it as big or as small as you want. And if you hold down the shift key, it will keep it in proportion. So if you notice, if I let go of the shift key, I can stretch it and make it wider or thinner. I personally don't like that look when I see fonts kind of stretched like that. I like to keep fonts at their native um, proportion. So if you hold down shift as you drag this little um, handle here to resize, it will make sure that it stays in those proportions. So there is tricks. And in order to take this and give it this look, we want to make sure that we have it highlighted. And then we go up to the effects menu. And I'm on a Mac here, a PC, it's the same thing. Under effects, we're going to select bridge warp. Okay, so the bridge warp menu comes up and the options here are very simple. You have a top offset and a bottom offset. Now, if you look at the bottom offset, you can kind of see that it's, um, you know, curved. I'm going to set that to zero so it's straight and I'm going to increase the top offset. Okay, so there it is. It's a few clicks, very simple. And uh, you can actually increase the scale width, which means that you're just kind of pushing the letters away from each other. They are kind of widening the letters as well. It's almost like changing the perspective and you can change the height as well. So uh, this is really cool and it, it's not like distorting the font like it would if you were just resizing it. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay and there it is, it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and let's add the word and, and we're gonna keep that just normal. Okay, and again, I, I didn't really go out of my way to find a, uh, a really creepy looking font, as in this case here, this is for Halloween, obviously, but that's okay. So I just wanted to show you how this actually works. So then we'll take and we'll do treats, just like it shows here. And let's resize this. I'm holding down the shift key to make sure everything stays in proportion. And as you drag this, it kind of tries to align to the letters above it. So this will kind of, you see that little line here on the S, that's telling me that, well, you're basically lined up with that S. So it's helping you with the sizing as well. Now I'm gonna take this and just drag it over here so that the T's align. 
you can see right along the two T's, there's going to be a little marker there indicating that those are both lined up. So now I know that those are lined up. I'm going to stretch this out so that the S's are lined up as well. And now that it's selected, I'm going to go under Effects and Bridge Warp. And this time I'm going to change the, uh, the bottom offset so that it goes out like that. And I may also, well, I'm not gonna mess around with the scale. But anyway, if you're making something like this, keep in mind the different settings that you're using and the different uh, values that you're putting in to the bridge warp tool so that you can keep the results consistent. Okay, so I'm gonna increase the height a little bit because I think I made that a little bit bigger and hit okay. All right, so there we go. And again, different font, but you can see here that we've got a very similar result. So now I'm going to just select everything here and I'm going to shrink this down a little bit just because you can increase or decrease these uh, these you know fonts as much as you want without having to worry about losing um, any of the quality because these are vector images. So along with all the different things you can do with fonts in here, there's a, a library that comes with it and of course you can import SVG files as well. So if you have a source for SVG files, you can bring them in here so that you can more easily create your final look here. So under the swirl section here, there's a little swirl that I can add. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger and get that nice and centered. You can see that the little center line appears there to help me with the alignment. And then I can add one of these, make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and just I can use my keyboard also, the left and right arrows to kind of nudge these, but let's see, let's get that nice and centered. That looks nice and centered. And let's add, I'm gonna take this and click on it. I'm gonna right click and copy, and then I'm going to right click and paste so that I get another one at the exact same size. And I can put that down here. Okay, and actually, you know what we can do? I'm gonna take this and rotate it um, so that it mirrors this. So what I did was clicked and I took this handle here and I held down my shift key. If you, you can rotate it freehand, it will rotate one degree every single time you move it. Or if you hold down shift, it does it, I believe in 15 degree increments. So you can flip it around. Okay. So now we have that. And, um, you know, you can pick another font to write your next little portion under here. So let me grab my font tool. Served here. And I can go under my font control here on the right and just center that so everything's nice and centered. And I can also change the leading, which will increase or decrease the amount of space between what you just typed out. And if you want, I mean, you can actually go in here and change the font on the fly if you wanted to do something different. Okay, so, all right, there it is. Let's just say that that's what we're going to go with. I'm not going to say that I'm the best at picking out fonts, but again, this, you know, gives you the freedom to kind of play with things um, real time. And then uh, when you're done, so let's just say I'm going to leave it, I'm just going to leave it like this. Well, that's really not that great. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna make that a little bit smaller and move it over until it's centered. That little blue line that appears is indicating to me that it's centered. And then, so you ask yourself, well, how do I use this with my Cricut or any other cutting machine? Well, if you have uh, any number of cutters here, and we can look at the cutter settings here, uh, there's a ton of different cutting machines that this is compatible with. Now, if you uh, that includes the um, Silhouette brand of cutting machines, which are very popular. Okay, so now that we have this all figured out, and let's say that this is how we want to cut it, uh, what we can do is right-click on this. I'm going to do a Select All, and I'm going to right-click and group this. Okay, so that's all in one group. Now I'm going to go to, and actually let me get rid of this JPEG. We don't need that. Okay, and now we can go to File, Export, and export it as an SVG file. Now, again, for those of you that have a machine that's compatible with Shortcuts a lot, you can cut directly from this program. 
for those of you that use Cricut, which seems to be very popular these days, you would need to export the file as an SVG and then open it in Design Space. So I'm going to call this Halloween Sign. I'm going to call it 2 because I already saved a 1 and hit Save. And then you want to make sure that you check the box labeled Design Space Compatible if you're using a Cricut and hit OK. OK, so now I'm in Design Space. I'm going to click Upload on the left-hand side and then hit Upload Image and then hit Browse and Upload My Sign. So you can see there it is. It brought it in. I'm going to hit Save and then click on it to select it and insert it onto my mat. Okay, and there it is. Okay, so um, this is pretty much ready to cut. Now, as you probably know, Design Space will probably treat all of these as separate cuts. So if you were to click Make It right now, it would just align everything onto your mat to save space, which obviously will not work if you're um, working with vinyl. So you do want to make sure that you highlight this and then click the little attach button on the bottom right hand corner of your design space and then when you hit make it it'll tell design space that hey I want to kind of keep this all together so that it cuts out this way so it's easier for me to ultimately transfer onto whatever it is I want to transfer it to so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned something from it if you are in the market to expand your software arsenal for whichever cutting machine you're using Definitely take a look at the Shortcuts A Lot software. It's been my favorite for a long time. And you can get a copy of it on svgtools.co. That's .co, not .com, under software and Shortcuts A Lot. And with your purchase, you will also get a uh, $6.99 Dreaming Tree gift card. So thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to crafting with you again.